All right, let's talk tonight. I want to share with you from the Word of God, and, and we want to uh, go into the Bible for our Bible study night on the power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. You know, it, it's so powerful when you begin to say what God says. But let's talk about how the Bible supports that tonight, all right? And I'm going to hit three areas. I'm going to talk about how God's word will not return empty. Okay, I also want to talk about how the fact that you have been trapped by what you said, S-A-I-D, past tense, <laughs> past tense there. Uh -huh. And uh, when you make a confession, it becomes a decree. We're going to talk about those three areas tonight. And as we move into that, I know that it will empower you to be careful, mindful, attentive to that that you're speaking out of your mouth concerning yourself, concerning your household, concerning your children, concerning your spouse, your partner, concerning oh, your finances, your health. Yeah, everything. The spoken word governs everything. You create your world by the words that you speak. There is power in your mouth. <laughs> Glory to God. So let's hit the first one. I know you know where I'm going. God's word will not return empty. All right, Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. Get your Bible. You know how I am. Whether it's your device or whether it is a Bible with the Logos Word all in it <laughs> or your device with the Logos Word all in it, we are going to uh, go into the Word of God. So that's Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. God's Word will not return empty. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes forth out from my mouth. It will not return empty but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Mm. Every word that comes from God's mouth has power and authority in it. And in the same way, when, whenever we make a declaration, mm -hmm, whenever we make a confession, whenever we say what God is saying, it's an expression of, of our faith. You are expressing your faith. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when you open your word, you make a declaration. You're doing it with the authority when you do it with God's word. Now, God said in the same way that rain falls. Isn't that, isn't that a good analogy? Can't you, can't you just see how he said? He said in the same way that rain falls from the sky and waters the ground. Doesn't it do so? So that seeds yield fruit for the one who sowed them and bread to the eater. So is the word that comes from the mouth of God. It will not return to him empty. Mm. But will accomplish everything he wants it to. And will achieve the purpose for which he sent it. God has a purpose in mind for every word that is spoken. And what is that? To bring you to your place of purpose. To bring you to your destiny. <laughs> the word of God. You know what? I love this right here. The word of God is a messenger. And it cannot return until it has fulfilled its mission. Oh, believe that. Oh, until the mission that God has said. The word of God is a messenger. And it cannot return until it has fulfilled his mission. Mm. Glory to God. All right. So let's move now into the fact that. So why is it that you're feeling trapped? Why is it that you feel sometimes that you can't escape from a certain place? The more you try to get away, the more it holds you down. The more that you try to move in upward bound, it seems like you go backwards. Let's talk about that right now. Why is it that you feel like you have been trapped? Well, it's because of what you have S-A-I-D said. Look at Proverbs 6 and 2. Go there. Proverbs 6 and 2. Proverbs 6 and 2. 
Okay. Solomon speaking here. <laughs> All right. Solomon said, you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth. My God. Ah. Proverbs 6 and 2. Ensnared. Trapped. Uh-huh. Uh. It says, if you feel trapped, you are in an unpleasant situation in which you lack freedom and you feel you cannot escape from it. Yeah. And, and I don't care what you may be thinking. What have you said? I just can't. Just what I hear. I just can't. Uh, oh, my God. You're snared by what you have said. See, you're being prevented from moving toward a place that God has for you. And the enemy, by what you said, is keeping you from escaping a certain place that you want to move out of. Okay? All right. And then I like this, too, from a definition of it. It says, having held tightly, having been held tightly in a part of your body by something so that it cannot move or be freed. And then it gave an example that he had trapped his finger in a spring-loaded hinge. But listen, you think about how your mind is being held captive by the enemy. He doesn't want you to be free. He doesn't want you to step out of the place that he's holding you bound in by the words that you're speaking. You are, you're trapped by what you said. Think about what you said about that that seems like you can't move forward from. Glory to God. Because the sort of declarations that you begin to make, it will be reflected in your life. Yes. I don't care what and how you want to defend it. It can't be defended. It's what you have said, okay, that is reflected in your life, in your home, in your finances. Oh, yes, it is. Whether it's a positive word or a negative word, you have to decide to speak the words that build you up, to speak the words that strengthen your faith in God. You have to decide. It is a decision. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like Ezekiel. You can look at situations as he did in Ezekiel 37 and just, oh, Lord, you know. <laughs> oh, Lord, thou knowest. <laughs> you know what Ezekiel the prophet was saying? Uh, these dry bones, I just don't see no way. But he didn't say that. He said, oh, Lord. You know it. <laughs> you Only you know. You know, sometimes when you say, can't say something good, you just don't say anything at all. That's the way my mom taught us. <laughs> Glory to God. So what have you been saying about your situation, about your health, about your children, about your job, about your finances, about your home, about your life relationships, about this, about that? What have you been saying? Mm. Glory to God. Your decisions, mm -hmm. your decisions will build you up. Your decision will strengthen your faith in God when you align them up with the word of God. All right. So let's move to the next one. When you make a confession, mm -hmm, it becomes a decree. When you make a confession, it becomes a decree. Mm. Job 22, verses 27 and 28. It says, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. I love this because, and, and he'll hear you. And then it says, You'll pay your vows. And thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. Oh. Your decisions will be carried out and the light shall shine upon your ways. What is it saying right there? It says, when you make a confession, it becomes a decree. But I read verse 27 before verse 28, Job 22, verse 27 and 28. I read it and I brought 27 in there it because it says, thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. Many times you're making decisions. Whenever you make decisions and they're negative, because whenever you make a decision based on your emotion, it's always, it's never going to be right. It's never, never. 
It has to be based upon the wisdom from your faith in God. All right? And so whenever you do that, and, and, and so Job says here in chapter 22, verse 27, he said, when you, it says, you shall make your prayer unto God. You shall make your prayer unto him. As you begin to pray, you know, as I said, you know, Father, let your kingdom come. Give me revelation. Show me what to do in this situation. When you make your prayer unto God instead of you handling it yourself. I Throughout my lifetime, my, in handling my children, in handling my congregation, in handling my personal life, in handling being a wife, glory to God, before my husband went home to be with the Lord. I'm telling you, there were things that I emotionally Oh, and then there were things that I intellectually could say, do, move in. But it gave no strength. It didn't build me up. I learned to make my prayer unto God. Oh, yes. And to begin to allow him to strengthen me. And then I made my confession of faith in him. Oh, let me tell you, God will always move. He'll build you up and he'll strengthen your faith in God. When you pray, God will tell you what to do. He'll give you what to do. And oft times, it's totally different. It may even be a 360 degree turn from what you were going to do. <laughs> That's the way he moves in situations. That's the way he moves. I'm telling you just recently, I've had God, you know, there were some things that I, you know, emotionally wanted to just really move forward in. Not angry. No, intellectually. Oh, yes. Not angrily. Yet filled with anger, uh -huh. but not anger words come filled with it. Gonna be firm, gonna be rough. And the Lord was saying, and I wouldn't have been sinning, no, but the Lord said, No, I've got a better way, I want this done. And then there's other times that God would say, I, I don't want you to do it like that at all, just throw that away. This is what I want you to do. And as I obeyed Him, oh my goodness, but I now I know His voice and the voice of a stranger, I will not follow. And I just stop and I pull back, works out every time. <laughs> Ooh, for God's glory because <laughs> his word will not come back empty it will not return void it will accomplish it will prosper the purpose whereunto it has been sent oh, glory to God so you make your prayer unto him mm -hmm, because you do not want that that you have said to trap you you don't want to be trapped by what you have said Mm -mm. No, 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 no. So you're going to be, you're going to make your prayer unto him. And then what? Yeah. I love this. He said, once you made your prayer unto him, Job 22, verse 27 and 28. Oh, yes. I love it. Once you made your prayer unto him, he shall hear thee. I love that. Because when God hears you, you get your answer. Oh, yes. You, you, you're confident in it. You're strengthened. That's what comes first. Strength and confidence. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Strength and confidence that you will be able mm -hmm, to carry out, endure what God says do. Uh-huh. <laughs> and not feel weak. And not feel, oh, I just feel so. No. You're strengthened and you're confident because God said it and you believe it. All right. Let's look at the rest of verse 27. Okay. Before we get to 28, it says, and thou shalt pay thy vows. I looked at that. Do you know there are sometimes when God began to speak to you that he'll also instruct you about giving, giving of your time, your talents, and your treasure. He'll also instruct you about that, something that you said you were going to do, something that you, you know, had it in your heart to do. But you know about intentions. We intention. The intention, you can be, oh, so intentions, you'll miss the mark with intentions. And But the Lord knows we're human. Yeah. He does. Yes, he does. So what? God will begin to bring to our remembrance that that we need to remember about our time, our talents, and our treasures. And when he does that, he says what? Pay your vows. He'll show you things that you said you were going to do that you can move in it and get it done. God begins to clear the slate. He begins to bring you and make you in, uh, into that place of accountability. Oh, yes. And you're talking about a strength. That's a strength right there. Oh, you can have... Um, Lint in your pocket, 
But when you've paid your bills, when you've done that that you're supposed to do, when you have fulfilled a word that you have spoken, when you move forward in that, oh, what strength comes from that? What confidence comes from that? So God begins to show you just how you're going to be accountable and responsible for the word that you have spoken. Oh, he brings all that into balance. What is he doing? Giving you power on the inside. Oh, that when you open your mouth, there's power in your mouth. Oh, that it cannot be resisted by the enemy. So then he said, what? Thou shalt also. <laughs> in other words, he start giving things and you start moving and he goes start. Oh, my goodness. I'd like to say it like this. Take you into his warehouse and say, what do you want? <laughs> Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Mm. The light and the light shall shine up on your ways. Oh my goodness. Glory to God. Your decisions. Uh -huh. When you're making them through faith in God. Making your prayer unto him. Faith in God. Your decisions will be carried out. And the light of God shall shine upon your ways. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Glory to God. I tell you, that right there, if you just pulverize that the next few days, I'm telling you right now, that will bless your socks off, knowing that God's word will not come back empty. So you can make the decision to trust God. Oh, yes, and have faith in God. You can make that decision. It won't come back empty. It's going to come down here on this earth, and oh, my God, it shall bring forth. Oh, yes, just like the rain that comes down. Oh, my goodness, my grass just shoots up. Oh, I'm telling you, after a good rain. Oh, my goodness. And so it will be. Oh, the blessings will just begin to spring up and grow. Oh, my goodness, in your life. Oh, you know what? The spoken word of God has power in it. Not only do you realize it doesn't return void, but you also know, just as Solomon said in the word there, glory to God, that you have been trapped by what you have said. You've been ensnared. Think about what you said. And it's time now. You know, 1 John 1 and 9 says, If you will confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So all you have to do is confess it. What is confession? Confession means that that, that you have said that was not right. Turn it around. Turn it around. Begin to turn it around. You know, that's what confession is. You begin to confess what? That that God has said in his word. You begin to confess uh -huh, by faith that that God has revealed unto you. Yeah, you begin to confess it. And the confidence and the strength will come on the inside of you and power. Ooh, you begin to frame your world by the words that you speak because there's power in the spoken word. Glory to God. Ooh, glory to God. And then what happens? You'll start confessing and it will become a decree. The light of God will shine upon it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And God's word. Oh, it will not return empty. God's word. Oh, it will not entrap you or have you ensnared. Oh, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. By what you said. So if you said something and you're trapped and ensnared, turn it around. Oh, glory to God. God's word. Oh, glory to God. It will make your confession become a decree. Oh, glory to God. When you pray to him, he'll always give you the answer. And all you have to do is say what God says. <laughs> That's what Ezekiel did. He said what God said. God led him right through it and to it. Oh, God said prophesy. <laughs> Begin to speak. Uh -huh. Speak what I say. Oh, prophesy to the north, the south, the east, the west. Prophesy. Tell the wind. Ah! Oh, God will, he will be precise. He will give you exactly what to do. You just have to decide to do it. You make the decision right now to confess God's word. And I'm telling you, change will come. There is a verse in the NIV version of the Bible. It says, what you decide on will be done and light will shine on your ways. Your decisions will be carried out. <laughs> your decisions from having faith in God. Hallelujah. You decided. I'm going to speak what God's word says and I'm going to have 
faith in his word. And when I pray to him that that he reveals to me, I'm going to start speaking it and declaring it out of my mouth. Glory to God. If you do it, there'll be irresistible supernatural power that will move and manifest in your life in God's word because it will not return empty. Glory to God. The word of God is powerful. It guarantees it to be effective in your life. It's guaranteed. God guarantees it for its efficacy in your life. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And when you speak into God's word, you'll be tapping into his limitless power. Oh, it won't come back empty. Glory to God. It'll happen in your life. Jeremiah 23. Turn there. Look at it. Jeremiah 23. Verses 28 and 29. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. In the 29th verse it says, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Oh, the word of God like a hammer. Picture it. Like a hammer. Glory to God. You know, a hammer can drive a nail in for positive results. And a hammer can break down obstacles. Anything that's in the way that's overcoming uh, anything that the enemy would try to derail you with. Oh, glory to God. Getting rid of the negatives. God's word is powerful. It will do what no other power can do in your life. He said what? Speak God's word faithfully. Mm. Spoken word. The power of the power of the spoken word of God. Speak God's word faithfully. And when you do it, what? Positive things are going to happen. When you do it, it'll move the negative things out of the way. Glory to God. All the opposition, all the obstacles, they'll be broken. Think of that hammer. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. God's word is powerful. It will do what no other power can do. All right? I want to look at another scripture here. Glory to God. John 11, verse 43 and 44. Three times Jesus spoke to Satan in the wilderness. It is written. Three times. Uh -huh. And every time he spoke it, Satan's schemes were defeated. Every time. Every time. Every time. God's word will not come back empty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is great power in the spoken word of God. Every time your words have power when they are God's word spoken in faith through your mouth. Mm. Glory to God. Speak his word. Hallelujah. And you don't have to guess what God's word says. No, you don't have to guess. Uh, mm -mm. Jesus didn't guess. He quoted scripture. We should too. Yeah, you should too. Quote scripture. Because the Bible is the word of God. John 11. I know where I am. Verse 43. And I'm going to read the first part of verse 44. It says, when he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. Mm. I'm telling you, that spoken word. Woo! Come out! Lazarus start coming out. Oh, the spoken word of God. The power when you speak it out of your lips. Glory to God. Then in Genesis, God said, let there be. Oh, mm. glory to God. He said, let there be light. Let there be sun. Let there be moon. Let there be stars. Oh, glory to God. Huh? Glory to God. He said, let there be animals and birds and fish. And more came into being by the power of God's spoken word. No. Oh, Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Spirit and life, John 6 and 63. That's the verse you need to memorize right there. When you speak God's word, let me tell you. Oh, the Bible says, that his word, that God's word is life, L-I-F-E. When you speak it, a dead situation will come to life. Hallelujah. You just begin to speak that word and continue to speak that word. You do not look at what you can see. 
Because you do that, then your emotions will speak. No. What does the word of God say? And then what? You decide. Uh, you make the decision. Oh, oh, I'm not going to be trapped by what I see. Huh? I'm going to speak the word of God and I'll get just what I say. I'm making a decree. Whew. But let the light of God shine upon it. I'm making a decree. Glory to God, because I pray to God. This isn't something off the top of my mind. This isn't coming from my intellect or my talents. I have received a word from the Lord. I've been in prayer and I feel, oh, oh, inspired to speak a word into the situation of what God said, because God's word, oh, get rid of the negative. Oh, yes, it will. Move everything out of the way. God's will will bring in the positive. Oh, make things begin to happen. God's word will turn a situation totally around in my life as I speak to it. And everything did got to get up and start moving in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So speak out God's word. It's powerful. Just like when Jesus spoke to Lazarus. There's power in your mouth, power in the spoken word of God. Glory to God. Speak out concerning your home. Speak out concerning your finances. Speak out concerning your, yourself if there's sickness or disease in any way. Glory to God. You got to let that body know I'm overcome by the blood of the lamb. Glory to God. And it can't stay. Glory to God. You let the enemy know I'm healed. I'm a child of God. I am healed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, the spoken word of God. Hallelujah. Speak to your finances. Tell your finances, come in line to the word of God. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Speak the word of God. Glory to God. Let the enemy know that your house, oh, I shall see increase, me and my children, financial blessings, and increase in every area of my life. Psalms 115, 12, and 14. Speak the word of God. The, there is power in the spoken word of God. And I'm telling you right now, it will not return void. It won't come back empty. Oh, don't you be trapped. Oh, God's word has spirit and it has life. It'll remove everything. It'll crush. Oh, like a hammer, every obstacle. Oh, speak the spoken word of life and see God turn your situation around. Glory to God. And you will find that the light of God will shine upon every word that you have spoken in faith, saying what God says. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to stop right there. Oh, this Bible study tonight, the power of the spoken word of God. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, I just love to see God's word work. I love to see God begin to move and bring spirit and life where the enemy has tried to kill, steal, and destroy. <laughs> but Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. Oh, come on. And that you might have it more abundantly. God wants you to live and not die and declare the wonderful works of the Lord. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Oh, the power of the spoken word of God. God is so good. Huh? Oh, glory to God. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. Well, it's time to give 